Hi, Mark Johnson, MTJ Roundabout Engineering. Uh, I worked with my co-author, Ting Lee Lin, uh, as a PhD in statistics from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This is a continuation of, of a poster that we that we did in, in Green Bay, and then we wrote a paper and submitted for the conference this this year, and it was accepted for publication. So that's a, a kind of a big deal as a practitioner. I don't usually get published. So what we did is we examined the single lane uh, capacity data that was utilized to update the HCM 2010 model to what's now referred to as the HCM 6 model. This data was collected as part of the Federal Highways Project called the Assessment of Roundabout Capacity Models for the HCM. And I'd like to thank the FHWA and, and, the, uh, and the HCM 6 uh, project team that collected this data and allowed us to use it for our paper. What we noticed is there's a wide range of, of data. And so this may produce poor estimates of capacity that may distort analysis conclusions. For example, uh, tell you you need two lanes when only one will do or vice versa. For example, uh, on the slide there, you'll see randomly selected circulating flow, for example, at 700 vehicles circulate. The data represents a 900 vehicle per hour range of data. And at a 200 vehicle per hour, you have nearly a 1300 vehicle uh, per hour range. So that's a, a wide range of capacity data in, within the single lane data. So our hypothesis for the paper was to determine if a geometric-based capacity prediction model may explain this wide scatter and improve accuracy and capacity prediction. The HCM6 does not include geometric inputs. It's just gap-based, which uh, Nathan uh, explained well in the previous presentation. To examine this hypothesis, uh, we disaggregated the data into two discernible roundabout types, a smaller, more compact roundabout, and a larger, more curvilinear single lane roundabout. And I'll describe further a little bit how we did that. Then we statistically compared the two capacity models for best fit to this disaggregated data, again, using the HCM6 model as well as Kimber's geometric model. So before I get into the, the work that we did, just a very brief model overview of the two models. Uh, the HCM10 model, uses a gap acceptance model developed by Sieglock in 1973. It's essentially a, a series of TN signalized intersection model. The HCM10 collected data in 2003 and a regression line was fit to that data. And the calibration is recommended to reflect regional driver behavioral differences. And it was using critical headway and a follow-on headway. The capacity is, is adjusted based on these calibration inputs. The HCM6 model form is unchanged. It's the same model from 2010. They collected data in 2012 and similarly fit a line to that data. And through the course of that work, they determined that the critical gap parameter uh, had a low correlation. So they dropped that as a calibration variable and maintains the follow-on gap parameter as the primary calibration parameter for local driver condition. The HCM6 doesn't relate capacity to geometry as their findings showed a low correlation between them. A quick uh, overview of the geometric model. Uh, the geometric model that we used was developed by Kimber and Hollis in 1980 based on the TRL out of the UK, uh, Lab Report 942. Kimber's um, model uses an analytical framework based on statistical regression analysis methodology, uh, which diverge from their existing gap based models. The model derives six geometric parameters with significant influence on capacity. Each of the six parameters have differing influences on capacity. There's really three major capacity variables and three minor variables. The major variables include your approach roadway width, V. You can see the capacity goes up uh, quite steeply. Entry width, E. Capacity goes up quite steeply. There's flare length, the distance over which you would widen, for example, a single lane approach to a two lane entry. That has a, an influence that breaks at a certain distance and it becomes very flat. So there's just a certain range where that has an influence. And they found the diameter doesn't correlate well. It didn't have a significant effect. But it had an effect only at higher circulating flow. So it's kind of a unique one. Then there's radius, the radius of the uh, roundabout at the outside quadrants, if you will, and the entry angle referred to as phi. It's good to note that the purpose of this paper was not to examine the sensitivity of each geometric variable but to determine if the geometric model may explain the variation, the wide variation in the data, and improve capacity prediction. So we segregated the data by geometric type. As we evaluated and analyzed the data that was available, the single lane data, we're able to discern 
two types that represented a significant amount of the overall data. 72% of the overall data used for the HTM6 is represented by these two geometrically distinct types of roundabouts. A smaller, more compact, this is the Glen Falls roundabout in New York, which has five legs, and it's about a 105-foot diameter, so it has more compact geometrics. And then there were uh, approximately five roundabouts located in the Carmel, Indiana area that had larger, and they all represented similarly larger curvilinear style geometric variables. So as you can see, as when we just segregated that data by geometric type, you, you have less scatter, tighter grouping of data, and less capacity variation in that data. So that was a pretty strong indication that perhaps geometrics uh, do play a role. To further examine if the capacity differences were caused by the geometric differences, we averaged the geometric model inputs for each type of roundabout, the smaller, more compact, and the larger curvilinear. And we compared the geometric model, and it's uncalibrated, uncalibrated, and the HCM6 model, both locally calibrated and calibrated with what's referred to as the global follow-on time, which is the average follow-on time for all the data. And we were able to get the local follow-on time specific for these roundabouts. Then, statistically, Ting Li compared the root mean squared, the measure of how well the prediction fits the data uh, for each model, and compared those models. So when you have a, a lower root mean squared value, that means a better fit to the data. So in terms of the geometric model inputs, for each type, the smaller and the larger. So we used Kimber's six geometric inputs, and for the Carmel sites, we had a range of, of geometric inputs. We measured them all, and we had a range. They're all, all larger and then an average. We used the average inputs of each of those five roundabouts, and there they are here. And there is no geometrics for the, and we did the same geometric inputs. The slide that showed the smaller compact one isn't in here, but I, I show the differences between the two. The approach roadway was no change. Entry width had a very slight increase from the smaller type single lane roundabout to the larger one, two feet increase. The flare length was, was very slight change. So those, these major capacity variables had, had very little change from one to the other. In the three minor capacity variables, the entry radius went from 21 feet in the small roundabout to 66 feet in the larger curvilinear style. So it had a 44 foot increase in radius. The entry angle, and I will note, in Kimber's equations, in the geometric model, when your radius changes from, say, 20 feet to 60 feet, you get a, a pretty big change in, in increase in capacity. And that's about the, you know, the, the curvilinear 65 feet is where that, that breaks, so larger radiuses don't give you more capacity. So it's right at the upper limit, and you get a, ch a, a, a change in capacity according to the geometric model. The entry angle phi in the small roundabout went from a more perpendicular entry at 26 degrees to a flatter entry of 16 degrees. So it had a 10 degree uh, decrease, if you will. And uh, when you flatten the entry, the, the, the geometric model shows higher capacity. And those two variables tend to go together. If you think about a more urban compact style design versus a larger curvilinear style single laner, the radius and the entry angles tend to go together. So that fits. For the HCM model inputs, we were able to, to just grab the follow-on time straight out of the data from the research and uh, average those, the follow-on times uh, for, the, for the larger curvilinear style as well as for the smaller compact roundabout. Our statistical analysis. So this shows the fit of the two capacity lines. The reddish color is the geometric model, and the green is the HCM6 model. We looked at what's referred to as global calibration, which is the sort of the default, if you will. It's the average follow-on time for all the, all the roundabouts data that, that they collected. And we looked at both that as well as then we used the local follow-on time for each type of roundabout. So first, the global calibration, the root mean squared for the geometric model is 112 versus 164. So that provided an improved fit for the global calibration. And then with the local calibration, the HEM6 model has a lower root mean squared value, so it improved using local calibration, but still didn't uh, get better than the geometric model. Then we did the same thing for the larger curvilinear single lane roundabout. Starting with the global calibration, we had a, a root mean square value of 172 versus 183. So the orangish red color is the geometric model, and the blue was the global 
HCM6 model and the geometric model fit better in that case. And we used the local calibration, the average follow on time for those larger single lane roundabouts. The root mean squared was improved slightly, but the fit was better for the geometric model with the local calibration as well. So in summary of the statistical analysis, Kimber's uncalibrated geometric model provided an improved capacity prediction versus the HM6 with either locally or globally calibrated model. And the HM6 model with local calibration performed better for both types, indicating the differences in geometry are the significant cause of the different follow-on times versus drivers in New York versus Indiana behave differently because they live in different states. So in conclusion, we evaluated the, the data with, with a wide scatter of data, which uh, gave us concerns about accuracy in our work and uh, in terms of how that would relate to uh, our evaluation and, and the need for laneage at a roundabout design. We determined, we wanted to determine if the wide range is caused by different geometry, and it, and it is, and, and to determine if a geometer model may improve the capacity prediction. And it did. So we, we segregated the data by two geometric types, the smaller, more compact on the left, and the larger, more curvilinear on the right. The smaller was about 105 feet. It had tighter radiuses and more pit perpendicular entries. Segregating the data by types, we could see just visually that we had tighter groupings. It's noted that this data is all saturated data, so it's a good data set. So the results show less variation by type. And when we compared the geometric model to the HM6 model, it demonstrated that differences in geometry, which are absent in the HM6, explained the data range. And the geometric model provided a better capacity prediction as compared to the HCM6 model. Again, I want to acknowledge uh, FHW Offices for Safety providing the data that we used for this paper and the HCM6 research team for providing that to us as well. Much more.